Welcome back to The Cyber Show, brought to you by Nextsoft and Threat Advice. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Ben, and today on the show we have our Cyber News Roundup, followed by a segment called Life's a Breach. Stick around for that, and a few other segments closing out with another fresh fish. But I'm going to turn it over to you, Elizabeth, for the first story. Thank you, Ben. I'll start off with a question. Ben, is T-Mobile your carrier? No which is a good thing because they've been hacked yet again. More than 50 million people have been affected by this, not only current clients, but also former and prospective clients. Some of the data that was leaked include social security numbers, driver license numbers, and credit scores. They are now facing a class action lawsuit because of this. Now, what's interesting is how they found out the motherboard leaked news of this breach and they were advertising more than 30 million social security numbers on the web. So when they went and tracked the source, of course, it was coming from T-Mobile. T-Mobile later confirmed that there was a breach and not only is it gonna cost T-Mobile, but it's going to cost each of those individuals the burden of identity theft. So this is a really sad story, but you know, it's been happening quite a few times for T-Mobile, so hopefully they step up their security game. Absolutely. And if you are a T-Mobile customer, we have a little segment for you coming up. So wait on that. Second story, BlackBerry. Remember them? Remember BlackBerry? You may think they're done. Actually, you'd be wrong. Okay. BlackBerry, they transitioned from a hardware company because, you know, they were known mm -hmm. for their, you know, their, their smartphones that had the manual keyboards. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of liked those way back in the day when there were actual <laughs> buttons on a phone. Um, but of course, their hardware division is no more, but they've transitioned into a software company. Okay, and now wow. they um, are a major supplier of software for industrial equipment. You may not have known this. Just recently, they announced a major flaw in their QNX software and their kind of dated versions of QNX, but still widely used. It powers everything from Listen to this list. Factory machinery and medical devices to railways and cars and components on the International Space Station. Oh no. So hundreds of millions of devices, pretty far reaching impact. The vulnerability, here's the interesting part of the, about this. It was revealed back in May from Microsoft researchers. So why so late? Why is BlackBerry so late in announcing the flaw um, when other companies that were affected by the same flaw actually went ahead and disclosed that back in May. Evidently, BlackBerry dragged its feet and resisted making a public announcement until federal officials got involved because the flaw could give hackers a backdoor into so many of these devices, um, allowing them to commandeer them or disrupt operations. On the bright side, for our final story, high-profile CEOs from Google, Amazon, and Microsoft joined President Biden for a very important meeting discussing the cybersecurity problem. The government realizes that there's something that needs to be done, and the private sectors control much of the digital infrastructure. Therefore, it needs to be a team effort in solving this problem. They promised to spend billions of dollars on cybersecurity infrastructure to offer supply chain aid and education. Now it's nice to make all these promises, but to have, you know, and to have nice media representation, but I guess we'll have to wait and see if they take action. Absolutely. That's all our cyber news for today. Keep watching. If you have T-Mobile as your carrier, like I do myself, these are some tips that you should be aware of following the most recent breach. You should change your password to your T-Mobile accounts, you should change your PIN number to all of your T-Mobile accounts, and you should also set up a two-factor authentication for those accounts. If you use your T-Mobile password for anything else or any other accounts, you should definitely go ahead and change that to a different password. And remember never to reuse passwords. All of these tips are things you should be doing always anyway to practice proper cybersecurity for your personal data. Life's a breach, stay safe out there. All right, my wife and I just had a new baby and that means we had to find a good, secure baby monitor. It's one of those things that pretty much every parent has to at least think through to some degree now. So I'm going to kind of walk you through that. If you, you know, if you have no interest in baby monitors whatsoever, 
that's okay. This actually has a lot of applications for just any Internet of Things device. So um, listen in for just a few minutes. I'm going to kind of explain to you um, a little bit about uh, how to get a secure baby monitor when there's so many different things to look at on the market. First of all, there's two main kinds. Okay, there's ones that connect to the internet and then there's ones that don't connect to the internet. Okay, so this is kind of the two big camps of baby monitors. So first, wireless. These are the ones that are internet free. So they don't have all the bells and whistles and features that some of the other ones do because they're limited by their physical range. This isn't the kind of monitor that you can take with you, you know, out on a date way far away from the house and you can actually just, you know, log into an app or whatever and, and check on your child. You can't do that with one of these wireless models. But the upside is they cannot be hacked over the internet because they're literally not on the internet. Um, the only way for someone would, to be able to hack one of these would they had to be physically close to the monitor and they'd have to be like an expert in radio frequency hijacking. So really, really good from a security standpoint. And just like a little side note here, there's actually two different kinds of uh, wireless baby monitors. One is analog and these just are the older ones. Um, they're cheaper but they usually can, can be prone to interference from something like a microwave. And then there's digital wireless, not to be confused with Wi-Fi, just digital wireless. These are the better option. If you're buying a new one today, most of the ones you'd be looking at this category are called digital wireless. The next big category is the Wi-Fi, so internet enabled baby monitors. And these are great um, from, from a feature standpoint, right? There's tons of bells and whistles. You can, you know, check up on your child from wherever you are. You, there's probably an app that connects to it, and you could even um, tie it in to your smart, your other smart home devices to do some kind of cool, neat things that like are part of that smart home ecosystem. But the downside to these is that they can be found and attacked by hackers and malware. And you might be thinking, is anyone really gonna try to hack into my baby monitor? I mean, it sounds kind of far fetched. I mean, does it really matter? Absolutely, it does matter. And this is why it requires very, very little tech knowledge to do this, minimal, to be able to connect to these, to find the signal, to view the signal, and even in some cases to control the camera. And there have been tons of stories um, that are pretty frightening of hackers screaming at children through monitors that have microphones, taking photos of kids and then using them to blackmail parents, um, scoping out a house to then rob it later, or maybe worst case scenario, actually adding the video feed to cameras into essentially like a, an index of camera feeds online that anybody can find and look at. Any smart device, you gotta think about it like this, in the world of IoT, Internet of Things, any smart device is essentially a computer. It's a computer that just does something, some task. And if that's the case, that means that these can be used as a gateway into the rest of your network. So yes, your internet connected baby monitor can be used as a backdoor into your network from a hacker. So I think it's pretty important. I think you have to take it seriously. So where did I end up landing with this? I went with the digital wireless model because I don't really need to have all those bells and whistles um, and it's the best security option for me. So I went with this guy right here. This is VTech, pretty um, good reputation company. Even though these cameras look kind of like aliens, um, it's two camera system. Good stuff, uh, haven't had any trouble with it so far. That's where I came down. If you um, are looking for a baby monitor and you think, well, I really do need those you know, features, I really do need a Wi-Fi baby monitor, here's some things you need to check before you get that particular model, okay? One, cheap usually means not great security. It probably means that manufacturer did not prioritize security, so I would not go with the cheapest option there. If they don't mention security on the box, it probably means they didn't build it in as a feature. So don't just go with the cheapest model out there. Two, make sure it offers some kind of encryption and that is listed as part of the features for the camera. You need to have some basic encryption for your video or audio signal. Three, make sure it's updatable. Make sure that if there's a if there's a flaw that's found by that manufacturer um, in the software that they they can actually issue a patch and that you can update. 
Um, and it's a good idea to just check and make sure whenever you get a new product to just make sure it's updated as you're setting it up. And then finally, make sure when you do set it up that you set a strong password, no defaults. Don't go with the admin, admin kind of thing. This is one of the ways that um, you will just lay yourself wide open to getting hacked. So if you follow that advice, you should be able to have a much more secure Wi-Fi baby monitor. Or you can go the route I went and get a digital wireless. So anyway, baby monitor security, who knew? For our final segment, yes, I am wearing a fish head and here is why. Researchers have seen a recent uptick in phishing campaigns pretending to be HR departments asking for proof of vaccination. So if you get an email asking for proof of vaccination, be very careful that it is not a fish. Cyber criminals are jumping on any kind of anxiety and with the pandemic stretching out and with the new Delta variant, we're seeing a lot of this kind of activity, especially with big companies like Google and Facebook requiring employees to show proof of vaccination before returning to the office. Um, we're seeing more and more of this. So. If you see that, don't fall for it, don't get fished, and we're out.